Hello everybody, my name is Veronika, originally I'm from Moscow, Russia, and I have been living in the United States since February 18th, 1994. That's a lot of years. I would like to talk about one specific date, which occurred recently. It was January 14th, 2023, and I visited this place here at Bats Ministries in, in Oklahoma, and I came without expectations. And I'm very grateful that God doesn't operate on my time timeline, on my time frame, or based on my expectations. Today, I would like to tell you about the goodness of our God, about His faithfulness, about His loving kindness. On January 23rd, 2013, I got hurt at work. And I had really, um, I don't even know how to describe what I went through. I couldn't walk normally. I moved. I shuffled my feet. I was in constant pain. And of course, I couldn't work anymore. And the bad news was nobody would hire me. By the end of the year, I improved a little bit, but nobody would hire me because number one, I was liability. And number two, I was in severe pain and I couldn't stand for too long, couldn't sit for too long. There were days when I couldn't lift my hands up to wash my hair. And there were days when I couldn't really get in and out of the bathtub. And I prayed for healing. I was a believer. I knew all the scriptures about healing, but I failed to receive that healing. And I've done physical therapies, took med medications, did whatever was necessary, took even spinal shots, which were very painful. And um, so praying and believing and failing to receive manifestation for a long time. Well, we had a visitor here. Her name is Amy Kemp. And she is a woman of God who believes in the same way that I do. She prays in the same way that I do. And to make a long story short, a prayer of agreement kicked in. And I instantly was delivered from pain. For the last nine years, I was not able to sleep because of the pain. At night, I would lay in bed, and normally I lay down on my side. And my hips would hurt me so much that I would wake up on average six to eight times a night. And you would wake up, wake up from pain, but you can't move because it hurts too bad. So you struggle to roll over. You're literally like miserable. Finally, you roll over and you're still in pain and you pass out because you're so exhausted. So that exhaustion accumulates. And of course, you're dysfunctional during daytime. You can't really live normal life. On January 14th of this year, 2023, when I was delivered from pain, I instantly was able to sleep without any pain. Now, this is how it happened. I asked specifically to be healed from hip pain, knee pain, and sciatica. Okay? And when God delivered me from pain, little did I know it was not what I asked for. Because I asked to be pain free. And in the last, today is, um, so, so many days went by, January 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, and today is January 20th. And for the last so many days, I discovered how much more God healed me from. Okay, let's start from top to bottom. God healed me from things I didn't ask him to heal me from. He just did it because he's good. God did it because he's kind. God did it because he can and he's willing. Uh, God's healing is the will of God. You know, it's not like he wills healing from some people, and for some people he's not willing that healing. That is not the case at all. So, in the last so many days I discovered what God healed me from. All my life I struggled with migraines. Whenever I ate any kind of car carbohydrates, carbs, we call them carbs, migraines would come in. Migraines, blinding, I couldn't open up my eyes. The sounds were so loud. Making my own steps, like footsteps, would hurt me. There was many days when I was debilitated and I spent time in bed, curls, curls and drapes closed, and I am literally disabled at home, okay? For the last week, I experienced phenomenal appetite. And I had understanding that I could eat anything I want. Guys, I ate pumpkin pie, the whole thing. <laughs> And there was no headache. I ate potatoes. I ate pasta. I ate bread. I ate stuff that a lot of people take for granted that they can. 
and there was not a single headache in the last so many days, and there will never be again. I received my healing. I was pre-diabetic, and I had to take, not this one, metmorphin. Some of you are familiar with medicine, some of you maybe not. It's a, a medicine that helps you process your sugar, okay? I am not on metmorphin anymore. I am free. I am healed. All right. So for tinnitus and for other joint issues, I took what's called silicoxib. It's a prescription medication, which I have not taken since January 14th because it's redundant. I am free. I'm healed. Okay, so no sugar issues. Something caused a pretty bad, bad pain uh, in, in the soles of my feet. Come to join me. She's my witness. Something caused the pain in the soles of my feet that was like stabbing knives. And I do not know what caused that. I never addressed that issue with the doctors. But somehow, I am healed. I have not had a single pain since January 14th. This is the faithfulness of my God. And I'm really curious, what else did I get healed from on that day? I will tell you for sure, my cognitive functions improved. Suddenly, I have memories of things I forgot a long time ago. Suddenly, I think clearly. I wonder how many of us been healed in our lives and we're not aware what God healed us from. I'm one of those people. I'm a simpleton. I'm not complex. I'm not a very educated person. But I know what I'm experiencing. I know what I witness. Since 2013, since the time I got hurt, I was not able to perform several things that I can easily do right now. I would like to show you. Faith comes by hearing, but I also want you to see what I'm capable of doing that I was not able to do since 2013. Okay? Come with me. Hi, Doreen. Can I show you what I can do nowadays? Yeah. All right. So I was not able to do simple things like this. Look. Standing on my knees. Look how straight I can stand. My body didn't do this for the last, last nine years. I am free. I am free. I'm healed. I can stay as long as I need to. I'm free. Watch this. On my second day when I went to work, okay, I asked one of my co-workers to record this, okay. I normally do not jump because I was told that you can never jump again. Several back specialists told me that you'll never jump again until you have surgery from the injury. Watch this. You see that? I'm not embarrassed to jump. Big woman can jump. Come on. <laughs> Watch this. This one I discovered the day before yesterday. I was not able to do this for the last nine years. I want to tell you more, okay? All right. This is chapter two. This is chapter two of my testimony. On, sun, on that Saturday, when Amy Kemp was here, she asked us to stand and to pray for friends, family members, whoever. I am married. My husband's name is Roger Rush. He is working for FEMA and he's on deployments for disaster relief all the time. Roger is 74 years old and he, as long as I know him, he had the same problem I struggled with. He had that hip pain which woke him up at night. This morning, today, January 20th, he calls me and he says, I want you to add this. This was his request to my testimony. I stood in that room, in that auditorium, and I asked for him, I said, Father, deliver my husband from pain. Just like this simple, not complicated, deliver my husband from pain. And so, when he comes back, he'll be back here, and he can himself testify that for the last so many days, just like I did, he has no pain at night, and he does not wake up from pain. So, I tell you this as encouragement, guys and gals. It doesn't matter how far you are from people you're praying for. 
My husband's right now about 860 miles away in Minnesota. I prayed for him in simplicity and faith, and he was delivered from pain. Okay? We would love to answer all your questions if you have any. Okay? So that's what uh, Raja asked me to share, that he's completely pain-free, and we're trying to put our heads together how it happened. Was it my prayer of faith, or was it because we are one in God, we're joined together? And he said, the anointing possibly spilled over unto him, and he got healed because I'm his wife. I do not know. I do not know the correct answer, but what I do know, I am pain-free, and Raj is pain-free. This is the power of healing. This is the faithfulness of our God. May all glory be to God. Jesus Christ healed me. He died for it. He crucified this. And he receives all the acknowledgement, all the thanksgiving, and all the praise for this. I had nothing to do with this. This was sheer supernatural encounter. And this is chapter 3 of my testimony. Everybody talks about divine healing and health. I never heard anybody address the issue of life after healing. Let me tell you what happened for the next several days. On the first day, I woke up in the morning and I had to unload the dryer. And I did not have to have special arrangements to remove the clothes from the dryer. I dropped on the floor right there and I cried and I cried and I cried. Not from pain this time, not from frustration this time, but from thankfulness, from I'm still overwhelmed with this, I still didn't process it. From being so grateful to, to God that He delivered me from this and I can live fully functional life right now. For half day I cried. I would do something so simple, household stuff, and I would break in tears because I can and I don't struggle with pain anymore. In the second part of the day, in the afternoon, I had to go to work. I was working that day 2 p.m. to midnight. And my partner and I were driving in the car my work partner, and I exploded literally with dreams. When you're in pain, and a lot of you are, you quit dreaming. You put your dreams somewhere on the shelf and let them collect the dust, because you know you can't. And it's not a lie, you really can't. On Sunday afternoon, I exploded with dreaming. My heart was so overwhelmed, I could not handle it, guys. I started dreaming about, I, I had a bucket list, I call it bucket list for the lack of words, okay, but I had a bucket list. Hot air balloon ride in New Mexico, hikes in Deer Peak in Albuquerque, pretty big mountain, very hard hiking trail, and I dare to dream now. Zip line in Turner Falls, cruise ships, caverns, climb another peak, it's called Guadalupe Mountain Peak, hike Pikachu Peak in Arizona and indoor skydiving. And that's just basic list. I started dreaming again, but the dream was born. And the dream is to prepare people for life after healing, because it is very overwhelming. I never thought about it being so overwhelming, but it is, okay? So for half day, I exploded and I irritated a lot of people probably that I dreamt out loud. I talked about what I can do now, things I can do, all the food banks I can serve in, and all the international trips, all the missions, I can do it. I dare to dream again. I am a dreamer again. So, on Monday, I exploded again, testing my abilities. Oh, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do this? Can I do that? And I could, and I did. One of the things, I probably performed about 300 jumping jacks since then, okay? And one of the things that I did that I could not do before, I have big buckets of plastic tops, the round plastic tops, and I stuffed it with hay, and you know, hay could be challenging. Guys, I lifted it up over, and I carried it over some very narrow passageway. I lifted it up and I carried it. No pain. I hardly felt the weight, to be honest with you. And the day after, I got exhausted. Whenever we receive healing, we become so ambitious <laughs> that we can go on and on and we need to protect what God gives us. We need to know how to handle the healing that God gives us. Okay? We can't just go and do whatever. We have to be very protective of our bodies. 
I don't say live in fear. This is not what I'm communicating. What I'm saying is be wise about it. So I started building fans. We talk about T-post pounding, we talk about 16-foot panel scaring and all that stuff. I probably built um, 300 feet of fence or so, maybe a little bit more, I don't want to exaggerate. Pounding T-posts in and everything, that makes your muscles sore, right? So a lot of people probably don't think about it, but when you receive healing, you really have to be ready for it. Your mind will play tricks on you because for so many years, for nine years, I had identity as a sick person. Well, poor Vera, she can't, or poor Vera, this. Uh, and so now, I do some things still habitually, which I do not have to do. Getting in another car, okay? I don't have to turn a certain way. I can come out of the car like normal people do, okay? Or getting off the table. I do not have to shift that weight and position myself to get up from the table. I, I don't have to. I just can get up like normal people do, as many times as I need to, okay? So, there are some redundant habits that the sickness brought and the injury brought, and the redundant, I have to get rid of it. I am healed. I can act normal. I can function normal. God is faithful. And also, I would like to mention this. Nine years is a long time. A big chunk of your life. And in nine years, there were periods of time when I quit believing. I would go for a week saying, you know what? I'm stuck. This is it. I just have to accept it and have to live like this for the rest of my life. A week later, I would wake up and say, you know what? I don't care how I feel. I choose to believe the faithfulness of God more than I believe what I experience. I choose to believe God. I choose to believe His Word. I choose to believe His promises. It doesn't matter how I feel. It does not matter at all. And then, a few months later again, frustration creeps in. You who experience this, you know what I'm talking about. And you say, this is it. This is the end. I'm stuck. It's not. It's a lie from the devil. I encourage you to choose to believe. Make a choice. Choose to believe the Word of God. Say, I choose the Word of God over my circumstances. I choose to believe the promises of God over what I feel in my body. Do not give up. Do not faint. Stay the course. Stay the course. You are not at luxury to deviate. Stay the course. So, I would like to tell you, when you receive your healing, you better be prepared for it. Because you will explode. Your heart will explode with joy. You will not know what to do with yourself. You will, your emotions will be such a mix. Prepare your family for that. Tell your families, hey, I'm going to receive my healing, and when I do, be ready for it, okay? I'm going to go bonkers, don't hold me back, okay? Prepare your friends for it. Listen, when I receive my healing, you better be ready because I can function normally. Do not act surprised. Act grateful, act glorify God, lift your hands up in the air, praise be to God, but do not act surprised because why are we surprised at something that God promises to us, correct? So... I think a new ministry will be born out of this. My heart desire is to go around and prepare people for life after healing. Never had that idea. An idea was born this week. I wake up at night sometimes thinking about it. By the way, I wake up not from pain, but because I have so much energy. <laughs> it's a different story, okay? I feel rested, I feel functional, guys. So, God, his time frames, his approach to things, when you don't expect, when you don't ask, when you really don't. Goodness of God, faithfulness of God. Jesus crucified that long time ago. And today I'm experiencing that healing because Christ already provided it for me. Just like he provided it for you. Do not lose faith. Do not lose heart. See yourself as a healthy being. Because in the spirit realm, you really are. I thank you for your time. And I wish you all absolutely to walk in the glory of God to walk in the grace of God, be strong, be faithful, stay the course. Doreen. Yes. I almost got kicked out of Walmart because I was healed. <laughs>
What happened? <laughs> well, I was there and I'm, I'm like a tiger since I received healing. I'm, I, I do not walk much. I just bounce from place to place or run. So I go do, 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 do. And people say, well, you're pretty happy. Right? Yeah. I said, well, yeah, of course I am. You know, I can function and I'm happy. God healed me and this and this. And I brought the name of Christ and I started telling people and go, they almost kicked me out of Walmart. They said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you need, you need to go. You need to, you need to get going. Keep on hopping that way. You know? <laughs> I almost got kicked Hop out of right Walmart. Out. <laughs> Hop right out. The funny thing, I come to work. And um, at work, usually people know I struggle. I struggle to get up from the chair and to walk slow. I walk like an elephant, you know, just slow steps, big, thick. So I started um, driving my coworker crazy doing. He's a, he's a buffed up guy. And I say, how do I do my stretches? How do I do this? How do I do that? I made a video. I have a video on my phone. Okay, if you want, I can send it to you. Okay. I say, please record me. And I'm doing my jumping jacks and I'm jumping all around and acting crazy and stuff. So people kind of started getting away from me little by little. I drive them crazy with my healing. So I'm telling you, whenever you receive your healing, your family and your surroundings need to be ready. Absolutely. You believe in that? Yes, I do. Doreen was there when I received my healing, right? Yes. Did I drive, did I drive you all guys crazy? <laughs> Tell the people, did I drive you crazy? <laughs> no, she was just running all over, running and, and uh, g leaping. And screaming. Screaming. And, yeah, the joy of the Lord was all over her. gifts it comes the anointing breaks the yoke right now in the name of jesus i rebuke the pain the sickness i command it to get off your body now in the name of jesus i command all the pain to go in the name of jesus in the name of move around move around in the name of jesus wow yeah come on now hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah! Do, do you have pain in your body? Lift your hands, both hands. Yeah, and the thing is this, could I stop running? Oh, absolutely, I was in total control. Did I want to stop running? No. no. <laughs> I went outside and it was dark, and I ran in the darkness around cars, but nobody saw me. It's wild. So a lot of funny things happen in the, in the meantime. Yes. You know, the funniest thing, I have a uh, small like hobby farm, I have 23 goats, and my bots usually they walk around the property, they're kind of serious animals, they have self-respect and whatnot. My bots change their behavior since my healing. Because they see me and I run from the house and oh my god, mama is running. So they all take off. So my bots run and they leap after me when I, <laughs> I set the pattern for them. So we go, we all act insane there a little bit. Not intentionally, it's just I turn around and my bots, bots are running after me. I'm like, wow, so yeah, life after healing is definitely different. You guys need to be ready for that. Doreen, you need to be ready. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. We need to be ready yeah. and receive that healing and walk in that healing and live in it. Yes. And not let other people talk you out of it. People can talk you out of it. Seriously. I've witnessed this very many times. Uh, it's a different testimony for different times. I don't want to, I want to honor your time. And um, it is, you need to know how to maintain your healing. I will tell you this. God gave promised land to Israelites, right? When they came out of Egypt all the Hebrew nation and whatnot, and they entered the promised land. They had to fight to enter it. Today, we have, we, uh, it says that the kingdom of God is taken by force, right? right? The violence taken by force. You have to be aggressive about your healing. You have to know what's rightfully yours in the spirit realm. And whenever they came in the promised land, they settled. They enjoyed the fruits of it. They enjoyed the benefits of that land. But guess what? The enemy that was kicked out, re regrouped, rebuilt its forces, came right back, tried to invade, tried to repossess, tried to do that. Same applies to our healing. Do you believe that? Absolutely. That's absolutely. So I am aware, I'm alert, that the enemy will try to come and convince me at some points. God is not faithful. You did not receive your healing. That's a lie. Well, maybe God alleviated symptoms a little bit. Maybe you were given a break for a little bit. That's not true, right? No. No. We don't believe that. No, not at all. Not at all. So we need to know how to possess, how to possess our promised land, our healing, our bodies, the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. Absolutely. Now the thing is, will I age? Yes. Oh yeah. Will I develop something that more wrinkles and more whatever might be? 
but I will not lose this healing. I know how to possess it. I know how to protect it. I will not allow my family to speak negative over me. I will not allow my friends to speak negative over me. I will not let them pray in unbelief over me. That's right. Absolutely. Okay? You need to know how to protect yourself. So you need to prepare your family and friends for the life after healing. You're going to tell them specifically, when my healing is manifested in this body, do not say, well, you have cancer or you have diabetes or you have arthritis. No. They're not allowed because the words are spirit in their life. Okay? That's right. What kind of spirit and what kind of life we're talking about? That's, do not allow people to steal your healing. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Yes. So we have to speak life and we have to believe in our healing and in whatever God has for us, we have to believe. Stay the course. Do not be deceived. That pain, that illness was crucified, do not participate in it. Do not say, my arthritis, my headache, my migraine. It's not yours. Jesus crucified it on the cross. By saying my, you appropriate it. Okay? You make it yours. It's not yours. Do not be deceived. Do you experience it? Yes. Is it yours? No. Okay? That's right. That's right. That's very good. We agree. There you go. There you go. <laughs>